Hello and welcome to 18 TV. Good morning to all. It is windy as hell, it's grey as hell. I'm out of delivery. We're heading out. I've been stuck on a laptop all morning, so I'm a bit late. It's about 8 o'clock. Charlie's loaded, he's out on delivery. Adam is feeding cows and he's out on delivery. Uh, update on stocks. With a bunch of full day failing, late nights, we are somewhat starting to get stocks up. Well, in this warehouse, shed next door, still empty. And we are running out of various different wraps for wrapping pallets and wrapping bales. So I've got to go get that. And Charlie's got to get bits as well for fixing pallets, nails, things like that. We literally run out of everything here. Still waiting for a tether to be uh, repaired so we can put it away. And the curves of the blowouts are still going. But this one wasn't me. This one was Big Boss Man, but not totally his fault because the tyre is absolutely shagged. And then it did that at the rim. So all in all, that was an exciting uh, morning a day ago. There is one of my sister's suicide chickens. That chicken spends all day waiting there. Let anyone drive in and then place chicken with it. Right, final for delivery. Got paperwork, that's sorted. Uh, ads will be on camera at some point today. So I'll speak to you guys when I get back. Right, so here we are, day on the hedge trimmer, doing some road hedges. It's um, a miserable, drizzly, windy day. So, time to just get some road hedges done. So obviously we can't go in the fields, it's way too wet. The amount of rain we've had in the last few days has been unbelievable. So that's way too wet for that, but we'll open up some lanes now, open up the roads, make them a bit tidier, and more importantly, make them safer. Got a bloody man code two weeks now and it's doing my head in. I've got to admit it's frustrating me. I've got an ear blocked up I can't even hear out of which isn't a bad thing because usually Justin's on my right side that means I haven't got to listen to his annoying voice all day so every cloud and all that it's wet horrible it goes all over the, the track the cab goes all over the track the vomit and it just looks a mess. What is the most bizarre thing that anyone's encountered while hedge trimming. I still can't get over the, the brains of people when you've got the hedge trimmer. One, they like, they love walking towards a hedge trimmer while you're hedge trimming of all these missiles flying out at them. And the other one is cyclists. Now, I'm not gonna go too much on cyclists purely because we could be here all day. We all know what we feel about cyclists. I'm not gonna get into the politics of that, but when you're edge trimming, they do just, you know, you are looking around, you know, you're trying to do your job, you're trying to look around the safety of the tractor, road users, blah de blah de blah. But they just spring upon you, didn't they? Why can't they just effing wait? Instead of trying to drive through the tractor, the best one is when they drive underneath the trimmer. That is the best one. And I just think I have really got no sympathy for you if something goes wrong. It's just brain dead. We all want to get somewhere. I don't want to be on the road holding anyone up. You know, it's ridiculous but you'll never stop them and the people that do drop, um, ride cycles they do seem to be brain dead people but that's my opinion I'm not saying I'm right I'm not saying I'm wrong but it does infuriate me that they just think that they just you know can just just hang on five seconds I'll get out of your way it's not a problem I will reverse back to you and I'll get out of your way so you pass me safely but no can't wait five seconds, can they? Gotta keep, gotta keep riding on in your lycra. But anyway, that's enough from me on that subject. Put down in the comments what you think as well about it. Whether you agree, disagree, but that's just my take on it. And it is, I mean, edge trimming's dangerous as it is. And it is, things flying at the tractor, coming through the cab. You know, I've heard stories from the past, what's happened to people 
things coming through the cab, impaling them in the neck. It is dangerous, and it is dangerous. It is a dangerous job. So why, you know, it's a machine at the end of the day, so why do they feel the need that they can just take it upon themselves and drive through it? I just, it's beggar's belief. But anyway, I'm gonna leave it there. Back, some new little additions. My sisters are half rich. Built an owl box. So that is a homemade owl box, more like an owl bungalow, but little addition to the shed, you know, bird population, helping the environment, all that sort of stuff. Here is what's left of this barn. So hay-wise, in this shed, three layers left, which uh, in all honesty, isn't great. We have got, weird, mushrooms growing in the, in the barn. Um, we have got five barns of hay. Yeah, five, because we basically filled up a great big section of the baby shed, bailed that. Uh, cleared out the one which the mowers are in, bailed that. Cleared out the lower barn with the leaky roof, bailed that. Nearly bailed this one. So we've got half a shed in a bay the middle bay feet, what would have been old meat, middle feed passage left of hay. So hay is going out. And also we've had two lorries and drags of hay delivered in, which has been bailed and all gone now. So that's pretty busy. Now I thought I'd just give you a little bit of a recap on that. And also tarmac yard is growing. How's drumming going? Very well. A little bit of a heads up, we just come out for having a cup of tea. Oh yes. Quick cup of tea, it wasn't the calmest cup of tea. No, it wasn't. My mother was interested, which uh, is always not interesting, more of a nightmare. Well, broken a blade yet? Of course I haven't. Hey, you haven't? Not yeah. Hit any barbed wire? Nope. Got an angry rider with you? Nope, because you took it by the cab. <laughs> I forgot my bike, didn't I? Yep. Loops, loops. Not happy, are you? Well, it doesn't matter, I'm not going anywhere with any wire. You say that. I bet you find like a phantom bit of wire now. Just know that for a fact. We just we've absolutely just um, cast that, haven't we? Yep. So he's done that. I'm gonna go back bailing. See you later. See you later. Charlie's off. Uh, it is. This is it. Video. It's been just a bit, a bit of a catch-up video because basically, um, we're so it, <coughs> there's busy, right? And then there's busy where you just just it feels like. You're not getting anything done, even though you're doing loads. Here's our super, super chaff bedding for cows. It's like a free bedding by the time it's gone through here. Because um, the amount it goes through, you don't really notice it's gone. Uh, now, down here, I just come down to rip the plastic on the last pallet, it's all done. Anyway, fault lift, beast. If any of you are thinking about getting a fault lift, I do sound absolutely amazing. No power wire, no electrics, just absolutely dead simple, completely mechanical, and she is a little gem. Also, there's a place we deliver that put uh, like squeezer plates on, flat eight grab, all sorts of little things, which it just is amazing. Because fault lift is way more maneuverable than anything else, as long as you've got a flat floor. Um, on a telehandler, if, if we had a flat yard out here, I'd probably get a bigger forklift and do more with a forklift, just because they're so, so handy. You just jump up on them easy. Uh, telehandler, or that telehandler, is a bit of a beast. You would climb up into it all day. Forklift, they just, just don't take up so much room. Just so you know, this shed is still empty. Filling up a bit, but not remotely, or remotely full at all. Also, the picking area for like customers coming up in is not being sorted out either. Oh, more jobs to do. And, and also the chief didn't still done, so we can't move soil. But, at some point we'll get somewhere. It's one, it's one, it's one of those sort of times at the moment where it's like, Everything seems to be going like a flash. We're working really hard, but it doesn't actually sit, feel like they're actually getting anything done because by the time we made anything, it's gone. We loaded something, delivered it, 
back bailing again and it's just a cycle of chaos at the moment. Hopefully, hopefully, by next week I might get things sorted a bit more so I can actually get back on Duncan Rudder and keep that side moving if, if, fingers crossed, it ever stopped raining. If it ever stopped raining. Also, in the next video, uh, Ads and I are going to have a little walk around the canoe or, yeah, a little walk around the Coon Power Harrow because we haven't done that yet. So I'll let you know now because we can have a bit of a crack and a bit of fun on camera with you guys. So, on that bombshell, uh, uh, if you haven't yet done so, please hit the subscribe, ring bell, give a thumbs up, that'd be wicked. If, if you want merch, it is back on eBay. Uh, just go to the link below, it's all there, going again. Uh, ready for Christmas, fingers crossed. If there, isn't, if there something isn't there, let us know ASAP. Uh, other than that, thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one. Completely gone. Here's the magical way of undusting yourself out of a dusty shed before you go in the house to set the mission off. It's actually quite refreshing. Take a minute. Well, other than that, I will let you go this time.